The method for determining how congressional clusters are drawn within an individual state is one of democracy's last great mysteries. Now, the methods for determining which state gets how many seats, that is a perfectly open process. The census is conducted once every 10 years, and every time it is, the 435 seats are allocated out amongst the individual states as fairly as possible. But it's at this stage that the openness ceases, and it is pulled into the political backrooms of each individual state in order to determine how those seats they've just been allocated will be pushed throughout the districts of the state. Sometimes to hilariously depressing results. I guarantee you all four of the clusters you see here are real. And every single one of them was passed by their respective state legislature with what I sincerely hope was a straight face. As they said to the people in their districts, yeah, this is what we think a fair clustering looks like. Some of them are actually so ridiculously egregious, you have to wonder if maybe what they were really saying was a little more along the lines of, oh, so you think you can do better. Some of them actually have even earned nicknames. If you look at Louisiana there in the bottom left, is commonly referred to as the lizard. Georgia, in the top right, the witch. And a personal favorite, Illinois, is right in the heart of Chicago, is the earmuffs. Kind of sounds like a children's book we would have read when we were kids, right? Lemony Snicket's The Lizard, the Witch, and the Earmuffs. <laughs> then there's South Carolina. Now, South Carolina, I'm sorry, North Carolina, there in your bottom right, doesn't have a nickname but if you'd like to run for Congress in North Carolina for that particular district and you want to drive from one end of the district in the southern corner in uh, uh, Charlotte all the way to the other end in Greensboro, you will cross in and out on the highway from the district eight times. And then there's Texas. Between 2002 and 2004, the districts were redrawn in Texas. And what in 2002 looks like pretty normalized, regularized, kind of coherent clusters, by 2004 were looking a little mangled. In fact, one of the clusters, as you can see, one of the districts became a malformed 300-mile snake, splitting up as a side effect the historically progressive city like Austin into multiple historically conservative districts throughout the rest of the state. Now, it's easy to say that this is just a corruption that is inherent in politics itself. But that's not necessarily true. Corruption is not necessarily inherent in this particular political process. This is Nebraska. And an observer quickly sees very normal looking districts. They radiate out from Omaha on its east border where a majority of the population lives out to the rest of the state. You see, all three of these districts that you see vote basically the same way that the state as a whole in their state legislature votes. In fact, about any way that you split up Nebraska into three districts will yield populations that basically vote the same way. There's no reason and nothing politically to gain. Nobody tries to cheat. It's with states like Nebraska in mind that I would like to propose the framework of a standard for how we can take states and cluster them into districts in a fair and objective manner. That is based on three extraordinarily simple rules. First of all, each one of the districts should be balanced in population with the rest, ensuring that all of them are an equal representation of the population and balanced within about 5%. 5% allows a little bit of wiggle room, and it's consistent with what's been deemed fair by a number of court decisions over a number of years. Second, they should seek to maximize the cohesiveness, preferring regular, normal-looking clusterings into districts instead of odd, oblong, unusual, or nicknameable districts. And third, they should be made up of whole zip codes, ensuring that knowing the, the popular, sorry, knowing your district is as easy as knowing the zip code where you live, and 
that the data used to create those is 100% open, auditable, and replicable for anybody to be able to look at. This is Oklahoma, a modestly populated state with about 650 zip code territories and five congressional districts. And yet even just with those five possible districts, there are literally billions of possible ways that it could be clustered into multiple and into those five specific districts. This is where having an objective form, an objective way of defining that cohesiveness, that second rule, comes into play, because in that case, it can become a data science problem. Now, data science is a relatively new field, one that combines statistical modeling with software engineering. And data science has a little bit of a reputation that once a problem becomes a data science problem, it doesn't remain unsolved very long. We really like to solve interesting problems. It's not only often our career, it's pretty commonly our hobby as well. And so to demonstrate that, I'd like to look at two potential clusterings of the state of Arkansas. So Arkansas has four congressional districts, and I can say with certainty, with an objective criteria, that the cluster on the right is a better way to divide the state objectively than the cluster on the left. You see a distance metric below each one, and that distance is the average distance between all possible combinations of pairs of zip codes within each cluster. Mangled would result in a large distance, but neat, coherent, intelligible districts minimize that distance and create the most cohesive clusters possible. And so it objectively can be said, the one on the right is better. Put simply, the average citizen that lives in the one on the right is a little over 58 miles from any other average citizen that lives and is brought together by the same district. And that's it. No historical voting data is included in the model. There is absolutely nothing that knows what political outcomes. I don't even know what political outcomes would come from this particular clustering. What I do know is that given these two, this is a more objectively better way to represent that population. And if we can compare two, we can compare millions. The computer you have sitting on your desk at home the $500 laptop that is sitting idle right now can perform and look through billions of clusters in the matter of just a few hours. That's how I found these. It is more powerful than a million dollars would have bought you in supercomputers just 15 years ago. So yeah, there are billions of possibilities of ways to look at what is the best cluster, but with data science and computing, we can objectively say which one is better, and with modern computing, a few billion statistical tests just aren't what they used to be. It works for any state. In fact, you can see Nebraska there on the bottom looking surprisingly the exact same as it does today. And alternate scenarios can be considered as well. If a state anticipates losing or gaining a seat then those can be explored ahead of time. Options can be looked at, and everything is 100% open, replicable, and auditable along the way, years in advance. Gerrymandering is not something that still exists despite a solution. Gerrymandering still exists precisely because there has never been a solution. Gerrymandered districts are decried as unfair, but without a fair to compare to, there is no objective standard, and there is nothing that can be demanded by the public. The way we are represented in Congress is not a political question. It is a question that can have an objective, a scientific, an auditable, a replicable, and a fair answer. And so, to revisit my old friends, to say, what if we crowdsourced getting rid of these guys? What if we sent out to the entire community and looked for those billions of clusters together where anybody could? The algorithms I use to create the clusters that you've seen today, I've made publicly available because my fondest wish is to walk off this stage, this no longer being my project. But to have hundreds or thousands of people 
doing the same thing, looking for more alternate and better clusters. That alone would put sufficient pressure on state governments to deal more openly with the public in how we are represented. And ultimately, an optimal can be found. And so I guess I have to say to my old friends, the lizard, the witch, and the earmuffs, oh, so you think you can do better? Yeah, I think we can. I'm sorry, guys. We just don't need you anymore. Thank you.